We give all the praise and the glory to you and you alone, Lord Jesus. As we face a wonderful year in 2014. But we declare tonight, this is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. Come on. Rejoice and be glad in it. Give God praise. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I'm going to try to just take a few moments to just talk to you. Is that okay? Just to talk to you, not just to preach, but in what I want to talk about, I hope to set the stage for 2014. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will take this message and remind us that when you're in the bathroom, you will sing about it. When you're driving the car, you will talk about it. When you're at home, you will begin to say it. You'll reason with it. You'll begin to realize that there are timing for everything. There is a timing. Everybody say timing. For everything. There are seasons that all of us will go through. All of us. Every single one. And you know what? God made those seasons. God made those seasons. I want to share about something that I heard from a wonderful man of God who shared about seasons and timings. And though he was much younger than I am, I, I, I learn it, you know, that this is true. And I know that there are young people here and older people like me. So sometimes we think that just because we are older, we're facing some end seasons. No, 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 no. Every one of us faces a season. Every one of us goes through some timing. And if we don't discern it, if we don't realize that God made it, then we'll begin to complain and fuss. I want us to look in our Bibles in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 11. This is what the Bible says. There is a time for everything. Everybody say everything. No, you're not saying it. I said there's a time for everything. Everybody say everything. It doesn't just mean good things. It means everything. There's a time for everything. There's a time for everything that is done on earth. Watch this. Listen to this. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Everybody say beautiful. beautiful. Everything that he has made is beautiful in its time. He has also given men a sense of what he is doing through the ages. But they can't completely figure out what he's done from the beginning to the end. That's what the New International uh, Version says. Now, seasons are contrasting as they were planned by God for life. Now, we live in a country where it's wet and wetter, hot and wet. All right? Now, we, live, we know about other countries, many of us have traveled there, where the four seasons are very distinct. And we love it because they have clearly springtime and summer, autumn and winter. And I've been in some of these countries and in all those seasons, and they are beautiful. But you know what? I was a visitor. When I look on the photographs of the houses covered with snow, my goodness, during Christmas time, Immediately in the plane, I'm already singing. I'm dreaming of a wife. And when I reach there, white Christmas, everything is snow. It's beautiful. But my friends who live there, live there, not visit, live there, curse and spit and swear and said, stop singing that stupid song. We hate it. We have lived here. We can't stand the cold. When the cold melts, it becomes slush. And the cars go out of control. People have died. Electricity has been shut down. Pipes have been broken. We have been frozen in our house. We have to shovel the snow. And you come singing like a reindeer. I'm dreaming. They hate it. Now, what is my point? I'll come to that in a little while. But God arranged for everything in life for us to live those seasons and to enjoy those seasons. It's hard. But God intended those things to be as they are. 
What is important is that we see what he has made as beautiful. Now that's the tough time. That's the tough part. So, we live in a life where there are so many seasons, so many contradictions in life. You are single, then you can't wait to grow up. You lived your season. And then when you grow up, you can't wait to get more mature and finish school. You want a job. And when you get a job, you wish you didn't have a job and you retired because now you have to face a nasty, angry boss all the time. Your colleagues laugh at you. There's so much of office politics and you wish you retire. When you wish you retire, then you wish you had more money. And the seasons that we go through, hello, everybody goes through. Now, what advantage we have as Christians is in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says that since we are in Christ, listen to this, God has already chosen for us the purposes of life. God has destined us. God has purpose for us. What is the ending? What is the beginning? He has a happy ending for, for us in Christ Jesus. But God doesn't tell us everything that's going to happen in life. But he does tell us one thing. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 he says, He has showed us the mystery of his plan. It was in keeping with what he wanted to do. It was what he planned through Christ. It will come about when history has been completed. God will then bring together all things in heaven and earth under one ruler. The ruler is Christ. We have been chosen to belong to him. God decided to choose us long ago with keeping with his plans. He works out everything to fit his plan and his purpose. So as children of God, as believers, when we go through the seasons of life, we have this in our heart. No matter what season we might be in, God has already known the beginning and the end. And he's already chosen a happy ending for each and every single follower in Christ Jesus. And that is very important because as a child of God, you see the Old Testament people understood there were seasons in life, but they didn't know how it would end. As New Testament believers, we know we have a happy ending because Jesus is the ruler of our life and our future. Daniel says it like this. He says in chapter 2 verse 19 to 23, Daniel said, Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the Lord God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. Listen, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He moves kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells in him. So here it is important for us to know, listen carefully, that God, listen, schedules every season. He has a plan. He doesn't let us know all at once what is wish we knew, right? I oh, yeah, God, what I'm going through now, I wish I knew where it was ending. What is your plan? What is the reward? Then I can tahan a little bit what I'm going. I can hang in there. You know, I can sustain what. But right now I feel like I just want to give up because where is this going? And God says, I'm over here. I finished it. But now this is your season. And I want you to trust me because I am the creator of seasons and times. Everybody say seasons and times. You see, you will experience the seasons and times in phases and in stages. You will not experience them all at once. God doesn't want you. You will never experience everything God has planned for you or intended for you. All at once. Now, here's our problem. Here's our problem. We want to skip through some of these seasons if we could. Huh? When summer comes in some of these cold countries, they cannot stand the summer because even in these countries, they have mosquitoes. Then they cannot wait for autumn to come. 
But when autumn comes, darkness comes real fast and it's creepy and it's howling and the leaves go like that and they turn color and then comes the snow. And for six months it's cold, especially in England. If it rains, it's one thing, but it, if it snows, it's one thing, but it drizzles. So you know how irritating a drizzle is? How many of you have ever slept with a tap going on all the time? Toop, toop. I know you've slept with a man or a woman who is like a dripping tap, but that, that's a different story. But in England, all the time they have a cold. I sit in the house, it, whether it's morning or afternoon. Well, one of the reasons is not just the, the weather. They've got cats and every animal lives in their house. So all the time... <coughs> And they're all red eyes. All of them look very gloom. The newscaster says like this in the morning news. Good morning. And the whole atmosphere is grey and damp. So when they come to Malaysia, you know, there I bathe the same as I bathe here. If I bathe here three times a day, even if it's winter there, I will turn on the taps and I will, I don't care. I have to bathe before I go to sleep. But they don't bathe, these white people. They, they bathe like once and a half a week. That's the truth. They just spray every time. So when they come to Malaysia without humidity, if they were to say, Hello, Joe, you faint. They come into my car and I'm choking. It, the, the, the B.O., and I'm not rubbishing my white friends, but it, they don't realize it. Like, hey, brother, how are you? Ah! And they don't, they still don't bathe in our hot, humid country, country. And they walk around with their shirt. They love our sunlight. Oh, they walk around like they've got nice, beautiful bodies, you know. It's like huge because, you know, it's all the time cheese and tea and biscuits and, and all of that. And they just wish they could skip past one season and just get rid of this cold, get rid of six months of a year and enjoy it. Now, I want to share with you three things and then I'll stop. Number one, every season has a struggle. Every season, you struggle when you were in school. You know, you had probably difficult times with your teachers or maybe you didn't have enough money for education. And as I said just now, you wish you were in another season. I wish I had a job. So many young people, even in our country, stop, don't finish school. Maybe because of many reasons, I wish I was working. Then when you get out there in the working life, there are bills to pay. When you drive a car, when you sit in somebody's car, you, you feel embarrassed. You're always getting a lift from them. I know some of you do, but there are some of you don't because you are born thick skin. But uh, other people, they feel really, they, they feel they, they, you know, I have to pay something. And it's not really your car, you know, and uh, you, you have to wait for them. You have to inconvenience other people. They tell you, man. Working life is very tough. I wish I had my own business. Then you try running a business. You listen to some friends tell you, you can do it. You can become a great salesman. You can. Just start small and all get on the net. There are so many people who made their millions. Then you start and you lost your hundreds. <laughs> and you wish the season. Look, listen. You know what? God said, I made those seasons. There are struggles in those moments. God wants us to stop living under the season of somebody else. Listen to me. Hey. God wants us to be free from trying to live somebody else's season. Look at them. They're doing so well. Look at their house. They bought it. They drive home when they want. They can have barbecues whenever they want. Look at us. Don't look at other people. God has created every season and everything he has created according to his time. Turn to someone and said, I, I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> Turn to somebody else and said, you know, I'm glad you're not me. You, some people look at some successful businessmen and this was a true interview of a young person who said to a businessman who had really earned all his money, is very successful. And there's nothing wrong in being successful. 
the start of this year, uh, next year, sorry, I want to start by the myths of prosperity. What are some, what is a myth? A myth is a traditional cultural thinking that has got no author. You ask them, who said this? They'll say, we don't know. But our mother said, friend said, opinion said, public said, CNN said. But who said? Who authorized that kind of style? Nobody knows. But thank God, we don't have to have a myth thinking. We have the word of God. We know who said what it says in the word of God. There are people who are authenticated. People like Habakkuk. What a name. But he was a real man. People like David. People like Moses. People like James and John and people who wrote the Bible. They are authentic people with an authority. That's where you get the word authority. It comes from authenticity. Who is the author? God is the author using people. You can trust him. So, don't envy other people's season. So this young man was saying to this wealthy man, I wish what, you know, I wish I had what you have. And the older man, who is a successful businessman, said, I wish I could give up all my money to get what you have. And the younger person said, what do you mean? He said, I don't have the freedom, the, the, the freedom that young people have, that, that, that looseness, that... I can live life. He said, I don't have that. I worked and I worked and now I don't have time to spend what I work for. I got it all. But other people are enjoying what I spend for. He said, I wish I could tread places with you. You know, sometimes we look at other people. You see the tree. You see the fruit. But you never see the root. You never see the fight that they had to go through. You never see the struggles that they had to go through. The seasons that they had to push deep. And many of them, their roots dry up. So outside they look fruitful. But you don't know when that tree is going to collapse. So don't envy other people in their season. And in their time. Can you say amen to that? Like I said just now, living in another country. It seems very good. Very nice. Yeah? When you look at the photos. But once you live there long enough, I'm grateful for a daughter who's married a wonderful Australian guy. She didn't go there to seek to get married, but she met this wonderful fella and we love them both. But she'll tell you, it's not easy living in Australia. No matter what, you're an Asian. No matter what, you, you, you came... You inconvenience us by taking our jobs. No matter what, there is a racial slur. No matter what, it's always, gr the grass is always greener on the other side. But the truth is, as I said the other week, the grass is greener where you water it. Where you water it. Okay, it looks nice somewhere else. You look at a woman with a perfect figure for you ladies. And I celebrate that. Women who are gorgeous, they work hard at it, they sacrifice, they gave their very best. That's a woman in her season. But you, some of you who have had two children and three children, you are in your season. She would give up anything to have a baby, to have a family like you have. But you know, we often look at each other's season. You are now in your season. It might have been a struggle. You might have gone through some pain and some labor and some suffering and a lot of tears. But God said, I made that season for you. It is your timing now to be a happy mom if you knew about seasons and times. It might not be what you're having right now is what other people are having. Celebrate with them. Tell them you are in your season and so am I. In my season now, it looks dark. It looks like there's a fight going on. But where there is no fight, there is no fruit. Where there's no battle, there is no victory. So I'm in a fighting season now and I celebrate those who are at rest. Praise God. Praise God. You're in your season. David would look down the years at his son Solomon. Daddy bought Solomon everything. David was the one who pumped in millions of dollars, not only from his kingdom, but from his own treasury. Gave it to his son. Said build a temple. They all say Sol Solomon's temple. But if you went to Israel till today, they honor and worship David, not Solomon. But during David's season, he went through fight after fight. Solomon came during peaceful times. Married a thousand women. The problem, that's the truth. The Bible tells us he had one thousand women. And the, the problem was not his riches because God wants you to prosper. Amen. God, want, God talks about that. Come on. He talks about you having things 
not things having you. But the problem was not the things, it was the women that turned Solomon's heart away from God. And ladies, can I just say to you, you have a powerful influence on your husband, whether you recognize it or not. Women, you are powerful. You're scary. <laughs> I know, thank God for many of the women in our church that they've turned their husband to godly men to seek God, to serve God. Oh, but I tell you, I've met some women. Man, they're scary. Yeah. And uh, Solomon's wives, they were pagans. They were bowing down to Baal in the secret of of their prayer rooms, and they were praying to all these gods. And Solomon started off as a great man of God. And he talked about seasons. We read in Ecclesiastes. He knew every season. Time to prosper, time not to prosper, time to sow, time to reap, time to weep, time to rejoice. He talked about all these things you read in Ecclesiastes. But there came a time in his life when he went away from God. But thank God! In his final days, he turned back to God and he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes that we just read in chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 11. Secondly, every season is shaped by what you say. I say that again. There's no amen. You people are, your, your quietness is deafening. It, you I feel it. Every season is shaped by what you say. We cannot control 2014's calendar. Oh yeah, we can have church camp. Um, we're going to Bali. We're going to well, go with the family, blah, blah, blah. All that is good. It's wonderful to have schedules and plans, but you cannot control them. But this is how you can control when things don't go according to schedule. It's by your words. This is what Solomon said in verse 11. He said, and everything in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. Can you shoot that back for me quickly? Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. And he says that, he said, and he showed us, oh, flip. Okay, there's a time for everything. There's a time for everything that is done. And he has made everything what? Beautiful. So you are in a bad season now. What are you saying about it? Hmm? You're going through a difficult time now. What are you saying about it? I uh, lousy. I wish I was married to another woman. Wish I was married to another man. I wish I was living in another country. I wish I was working in another job. Listen. Jesus said. Listen. Jesus said. I didn't say it. Jesus said. Whatever your faith is. So be it. Okay. You say I'm useless. Okay. You're useless. You say, I cannot make it, I cannot go through. Fine, God says, that's okay, up to you. It's according to your faith, it will be unto you. So Solomon says, every season in its time, whatever you have chosen to call your current season in your life. So what are you and I saying about our experiences? So our words create our current situation. It creates the atmosphere. It creates the circumstances. And it creates the season to bloom. In your season of difficulty, if you say, well, I'm going through a tough time. I'm going through financial challenges. But God is my provider. You say that in the shower. You say that when you're driving. You say that when you're coming home. The circumstances don't look good. But Jehovah is Jireh. He is my provider. He is the El Shaddai. I, not the El Chipo. He is abundant God. Say it with your mouth. And as you keep on saying it. No, it's not begging God. It's being resistant. It's being, it's being consistent in what you are saying. It's not like we have to keep on begging God. It's being, it's being consistent in what we say about God. And it will come to pass. Are you with me? If you say life is too tiring. Instead of saying life is so tiring, but it's beautiful. Imagine if you never got tired. I'm so busy nowadays. Thank God you are busy. At least you got a job. Oh, the Christmas season was so busy. Thank God you were busy. That means you have a lot of friends and a lot of people like you. And you have the muscles and the strength to cook and bake and shop and party. It's beautiful. Oh, I'm so tired. Thank God you're tired. That means you've been working hard. When we are tired, listen, you will never know what God is the strength of my life if you never got tired. You didn't get that. Some of you, you know, you are so... 
You will never know. Thank God for financial difficulty. You know why? It's beautiful. Why? Because during my financial difficulty, I can experience the provision. I don't just want to read in the Bible that Moses spoke and had gold and Abraham was rich and Joseph and Isaac were rich. For what? I want to read that. For what? How does that affect me? I want to know that in my dry season, during my famine time, I will be very rich because God who blessed Abraham through Christ Jesus, we are blessed in Abraham. That the blessing of Abraham, we need to say things like that. You might be going through a difficult time. It's beautiful. Depends what you want to see it. Now, I'm not saying that we are mad that we don't feel the pain and the, and the sense of loss and the sense of hurt. But shape it. Shape that season by what we call it. Someone said life is like waves from the ocean. If you are standing there like a dummy like some of us are, why is this happening? One wave after one wave keeps crashing on you. But if you're a smart person moving by understanding that God has created seasons and times, you will ride the waves, baby. You will ride the waves. Yeah, and you won't get smashed and crushed by the waves of life that are thrown against us. We can call it beautiful. Like I said, we cannot control everything about the seasons. But God has already planned for us in Christ Jesus. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Amen? He's the first. He's the last. He's the resurrection. He's the life. Nothing misses Jesus. And we are right smack in the center of the will of Jesus Christ. So when those seasons come, we don't know all the faces and times and all of that. But one thing we can have control is our mouth. And some of us have got a stinking, dirty mouth that speaks terrible things over the seasons and shape it to what God never intended it to be. So let's change in 2014. Can you say amen? Can we say, Lord, anoint my mouth that I will speak to shape the future, that I will speak the words anointed, trained by the Holy Spirit, trained by the Word of God, not by public opinion or what my relatives are saying or what my colleagues are saying about how bad the country is and how bad the times are. I'm glad a young couple came to see me the other day. He was always on Facebook whinging about everything. I won't mention his name because many of you have done that. So he's whinging about the government, whinging, just parroting what stupid, young, ignorant people say about the government and, and all of that. And my response has always been like, if you can change the government, get elected. You know, run for office and change. If you cannot, shut up. Shut up. Go stay in another country. See what happens and just cross the border. You know? But while we are here, I'm not saying that we are to just sit on our hands and do nothing. I'm saying that we can change the atmosphere if we learn to, if we learn to be so focused on what the word says and not what everybody is. Every politician, many of them are good Christians and we thank God for them. But being a politician basically is that you lie. And you stir up anger in young people. Burn the New Straits Times. Burn the New Straits Times. And all this... Uh, burn, burn! Why? Don't know. Because they said burn! So he sat in my house and he says, You know, Pastor, I'm really... Since I stopped being like that, I'm really calmed down. And since I've calmed down... <laughs> you know, Pastor, I'm so happy. Life, God is blessing me left, right, center. My wife and I couldn't have a baby for a long time. Now we are going to be parents. <laughs> <laughs> Young people, <I> live. <laughs> you're going to do well in your education. Amen. You're going to prosper, become great leaders and senators even in our country. And fight corruption and stand against the tide of evil. Not with a stinking attitude. But with an attitude that says no matter how ugly it might seem, it's beautiful because this is God's season at this time. In his time, he knows how to turn. How can God promote you and lift you to higher levels if in this season you don't know how to stand the test of time? It's difficult, but stand the test of time and let those roots. Is somebody listening here to me? 
Okay, it's beautiful to be busy. It's beautiful when the kids are not going well in their small and they're rebellious. And it's beautiful when things are not going too well in your office. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? You are a Christian. You speak very differently from the people of the world. He says, let the redeemed, not the heathen, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Our words need to be so aligned to the word of God. And it's tough. Anybody can say anything what everybody else is saying. And they don't have any authenticity. They don't have any power to prove what they're saying. But God's word has been proven true and true and true. And his word will never change. Say the word of God over your circumstance. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. You know, many times we uh, talk about things like this. And we often think, <coughs> all these things are in the future. One day, things will get better. How about saying, right now, this is the season. This is the day the Lord has made. It's not everything that I want to see happen. Certainly not. Of course, there are many things that need to be adjusted in my finances, adjusted in my office, in my home, and in my country. Certainly, there are a lot of things that need. But right now, I'm not going to call it ugly. I'm not going to call it evil. I'm going to call it beautiful. Because this is what God has ordained for me. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number three. Every season has something of strength. Something sweet. Something beautiful. When uh, my wife shared a testimony last week on Sunday about her mom, um, you know, and her, her, her battle with cancer and it's still going on. But how the whole family has been rallied together. Um, I know I'm married to her, so I, the family is pretty close, but not as close as it is right now. The strength that they have calling each other, all of them are calling each other, praying for each other, talking about God. One of the sisters who has not really come into the knowledge of God is asking questions like, what is, what, what is Jesus Christ, the Son of God? What is that? Now those things are beautiful things that you savor during an ugly, sour, terrible season like this. Because you can find strength in the worst situation of your life if you will say so. If you will speak it, it will bring strength. It will make you a stronger person. Can you say amen? You can waste it and let it become bitterness in your life that you carry. It will come back to you in years to come. It will spring out. The Bible says a root of bitterness springs out. Come up and get you. So we need to deal with it. Laid at the cross. We all have bitter and painful experiences. We bring it to the cross of Jesus. So I laid at your feet at the cross. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. There is strength in your season that you can learn. I remember listening to Pastor Steve Furtick. And he was sharing about this point. And he said he goes to visit his father. was very sick. And his father was dying of liver cancer. And he's always in hospital going to see his father, praying for his dad. And then he planned for his year holiday where he's supposed to take a break with his family, go to the beach. And he's supposed to write his book and, you know, and do all that sort of stuff. So while he's on the beach writing his book and talking to his family, he gets a phone call from his mom. And the mother says, your father is going, you have to come right now. So in his heart, he was saying he could have got so angry and so bitter. Could have got so disappointed, like, I was there with you all the time, couldn't, you, couldn't have you died that time, you know what I mean? Now, while I'm doing this, and he's a pastor of a very fast-growing church in America. But he said what he did was he went back home, cancelled the holiday, went back home, sat with his aging and hurting sick father. And he said he took his box guitar. And his father was there, couldn't respond to him too well. But he sat there with his box guitar, and he started singing all the old gospel songs his dad used to sing. Like, you know... Uh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw, just singing like that. And he sang another song, oh, the blood of Jesus. He started singing, what a friend we have in Jesus. And over the next two or three days, he just sang those hymns. And he said, it was the most beautiful worship moment. He said, I could not have written a book. I could not have written a hundred books if I didn't have a sweetness in that terrible situation and find strength in God. He said, his father died shortly after that. 
He was able to share this with his whole church without any bitterness or loss or anger. But there was a sweetness in his spirit. And I believe that all of us go through seasons where we go through pain. And we go through times where we have to really have the strength of God. But God will give us strength in each season. Now, 2014 is coming upon us in a couple of hours. It's going to be a fantastic year. But not without its seasons. And a wise person says, this is a season for me to stop. This is a season for me to walk. This is a season for me to build. This is a season for me to pray. This is a season for me to wait. This is a season for me to fight. For every season, there is a timing and a purpose. But you can shape it if you open your mouth and speak beautiful things. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Stand with me right now. Whatever season you might be going through, in Jesus' name, I want you to right now lift your hand and say, it's beautiful. I don't care what the circumstances may look like. I am not looking. God, I'm not considering, as someone once said, I'm not looking at my circumstance. I'm looking to God. I'm looking to God. This is my season. Whatever it might be. It might be a financial stress. In 2013 that you never climbed over. You never got over it. But you need to get over it. Nobody's going to get over it for you. You need to choose. This is the day I will speak beautifully. I will speak the word of God over my circumstance. And as you do that right now with hands lifted up. I want us to pray right now. Out loud. Heavenly Father. I pray. In Jesus name. You know my beginning. You know my finishing. You know what I can do. And what I'm supposed to do. I lift my hands. And to you. You are the God. Of all my seasons. And I declare right now. That it is beautiful. That it is good. That it is loving. It is abundant. Full of your power, of your grace, of your mercy, like I never knew before. Heavenly Father, as I enter in, into a brand new year, and as the seasons of life change, I will trust you, and I will call every day, rainy days, traffic jams. Grouchy bosses, stinking politicians, corruption, happy birthdays, Chinese New Year. Every day, I will celebrate and call it beautiful. In Jesus name, Father, remind me of this. When I stand up, when I sit down, when I lie down, when I rise up, when I'm coming in, when I'm going out, it's beautiful. I'm beautiful. It's beautiful. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now give the Lord a big clap, won't you? <laughs> yeah.